Thank you. I know we could worship all day. The presence of God's here. Stronger than before. And so I felt to preach now. Let's do the announcements later. Receive the offering later, if we remember. But I have a picture to show you of my message today. Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, was on the beach with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was recorded in the book of John, the conversation. And Jesus said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And of course, Peter was distressed at the words, the question. How could God ask that? But he did. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Then again, Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter, imagine Peter, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. And then a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter must have been beside himself. Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep. And here is a classic pattern for the church. Jesus knew that Peter loved him. That wasn't why he asked the question. Jesus knew Peter loved him. But Peter didn't know that he loved him. And Peter didn't know that God knew that he loved him. Peter needed to know. And that's why my question to you this morning is, do you know the love of God? Do you love God? And this is a critical foundation of the Christian life that you can't begin to serve God really unless you know that you love him when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist a voice came from heaven and said this is my beloved son in him I am well pleased a voice came Jesus has not ministered a moment he had not preached a word hadn't healed anybody, hadn't said a thing. And here was the affirmation of a father in heaven to his beloved son. And not just to Jesus, but to all who heard. Some thought it thundered, some, some didn't hear it. Some did, because it was written down for us. And here is the affirmation of love. Here is a display of a relationship founded on love. And Jesus had an awareness of his father's affectionate love. And this was the foundation of his ministry. And I want to tell you, friends, it's the foundation of your ministry. It's the foundation of your life. The affectionate love of the father that you need to know. I want to share a story that I shared on Friday night with my group with you. And then I want to tell you about an encounter I had with the Holy Spirit last night, which has profoundly touched me, and I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but... Aside from the emotion of God's presence, He wants to encounter us in a way today and, and in this season that would lay this foundation of love in your hearts and for the future. I don't know what God's going to do with us in the future, but I know this. He's not coming to us today to send us out into ministry. There are faith messages to come, I believe, and I believe there are ministry messages to come. But right now, the Holy Spirit wants to do something powerful in us to, to establish us again in the love of God. Because you know the Scripture says that perfect love casts out fear. And you also know the Scripture that says where there is still fear resident in you, then you have not been made perfect in love. And I think God wants to make us perfect in love by the removal of all fear out of our lives. It's like fear is greedy. It can't coexist with any other feeling that's negative. It takes over. It is the resident, dominant 
spirit in your life. And so that's my question to you today as I ask myself this. Do you know the love of God? How profound it is. I want to tell you a story about a man and a son. And his son had a friend over to play one day and they were dressed in army fatigues and they were playing army games outside having a really good time with what war was happening and these two boys were winning that war in the garden and then the son snuck inside his, I'll call him John and his friend Jack following at a distance snuck inside and there was dad watching TV on the couch and he quietly just opened the door and he could just see his dad just focused on the telly what he didn't know was that his dad had eyes in the back of his head and could see the boy he actually heard the door creak so he knew he was there so he snuck up behind him behind the couch went from one end of the couch went to the other and then when he was absolutely sure his dad wasn't looking he jumped on him from behind and grabbed hold of his dad and before they knew it, his dad had grabbed hold of him and the two of them were rolling on the floor laughing and giggling and having this war game together and fighting and, and he was tickling his son. His son was just squealing with delight. And it was such a sight for Jack who was just peering through the door at this relationship which was just explosive and, and expressive without any, any kind of hindrance. This just love pouring out on this boy and... This boy loving his dad, and there's Jack, wide-eyed, thinking, Oh, I wish I could have a dad like that. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of it, John yells out, Jack, come on, Jack. So Jack, without a thought, runs into the, the room and leaps on John's dad. And the three of them now are having such a time on the floor, and they're all laughing and just enjoying the relationship. And then... Jack gets up and John gets up and uh, Jack's just astonished at how his heart is just deeply moved by the love of a father for his son and the love of a son for his father. Now I want to ask you something. If John wasn't there that day and Jack had just sneaked in to see John's dad, do you think there was any chance that Jack might have jumped on top of John's dad without John being there. I think he might have been a bit afraid. I mean, usually young boys just don't jump on top of their friends' dads without some kind of invitation, right? John invited Jack, and Jack jumped in. And of course, the obvious implication is, here's the Father in heaven, here's the Son, having this a wonderful relationship together. And it's like they're just rolling on the floor. And I never thought of Father God rolling on the floor with Jesus and just having such a fun time. I just thought he was the ancient of days, you know. Don't mess with the old guy, you could break bones in his body, but, you know, but that's not how he is. That's not how they are. I think they're a pretty fun bunch of guys, and that's the Trinity, friends, that's the Trinity. And I want you to come with me to John chapter 14. Come to John chapter 14. So I want you to know today how loved you are and the power of that love in your life that the Lord wants to and insists on being there. In fact, it's critical that it is there. You must have your being before you can ever do a doing for God. It's foundational that you go out to serve God knowing how much God loves you. Amen. You need to know it. It's not just a mental thing. In your mind. Yes, I know in my mind. But do, do you know in your spirit? Do you know in your heart? Have you experienced and encountered that kind of love? I believe God is showing us a picture of the Trinity. Not as a remote understanding. God is three and three are one. I think God wants us to understand the reason why he showed us the Trinity is so that we can be part of it. And Jack, of course, is you. You're Jack. You're the little boy looking through the door. And I'm Jack. And we've been looking in on this relationship of God. And it's a profound relationship. 
The whole universe is founded upon the power of this oneness of God. How can anybody say there is no God? <laughs> if there is no God, I don't want to exist. I don't want to be around because I want what they've got. I'm looking through the door at Jesus and the Father hugging and, and being joyfully intimate together. So here in John chapter 14, we see in verse 23 a conversation about believing. And Jesus said in verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. The reason why the father let Jack in on the play was because the father knew that Jack loved John. Did you hear that? The father knew that Jack was a dear friend to John and he loved him and he let him in to the most precious relationship in the father's life was that of the son. The most precious thing to Jesus Christ is ministry to the Father in heaven. And all ministry on earth, anything you ever do for God, is primarily, number one, a ministry unto the Father himself. If you want to go and minister and love somebody, you need to know that first, you cannot love them until you first minister to the Father. And that is the relationship of all people in restoration to, to God in heaven. And out of that relationship, then you go and you minister that love. And the power of God be upon you to bring to pass whatever God's will is. Here is a profound implication where Jesus said, If you, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. You will have no trouble keeping the word of God if you love him. You want to. The last thing you want to do is not keep God's word. Far be it from me to not keep God's word. And love does that to you because you value the word of God so much because you value the God of the word. Isn't it true? You see, if you love someone, you'll value their word. That's what I'm saying. Their word means a lot to you. And so the Bible means a lot to us because it's the word of God. And we love him. And Jesus is saying this. Here's the truth. If you love me, my father will love you. This is where it gets difficult for a lot of us, the relationships of father and son or father and daughter. It gets tough now and it gets profoundly impacting when you read the next part. He said, and we will come to make our home with you. Now for many years I had no trouble with Christ in me, the hope of glory. I, I really enjoyed that thought and I believed it. And I'd had encounters with Jesus in my life as you have but then to see the scripture isn't just about Jesus coming but the father is coming to your house to live with you and here's little Jack walking out after a profound experience like that just he would have been on cloud nine going home thinking oh, wow I enjoyed that so much that did something to me changed me could life really be like that and then as he's walking out the door, John says, Hey, Jack, Jack, my dad just said to me, We're coming to your house. We're going to do it again in your place. Can we come to your house? Oh, yeah, you can come any time to my place. Would you come to, and play at my house? Yes, Jack, me and my dad, we're coming to do this. We're going to have games in your house. Oh, wow. Hey, hey, Jack, just before you go, can we stay at your place? Oh, my God. Can we stay there? That's profound. So last night as I was going to sleep, I was thinking about this verse. For a long time, I was just thinking about Jack. Because that's me. I'm Jack. You're Jack. I was thinking about that invitation. I thought, wow, Father, geez, you come, you're in my house. You, you live with me. This is not a future hope. Because Jesus is here, Father, you're here too. So I imagined what Father God might be like, and I imagined Jesus, what he might look like. 
And I said this casually to the Lord. I just said it out loud. I was on my bed. I said, Lord, where's the Holy Spirit? And Jesus looked at me and said, he's already there. And then I saw him. He wasn't fire. He wasn't oil. He wasn't water. He wasn't a dove. He wasn't an earthquake. He wasn't a still small voice. He was a young man. He was a person. And I saw him in my spirit. And it profoundly touched me to the to the core of my being. The Holy Spirit is a person and He wants to reveal Himself to you as a person. I saw Him as a young man. There He was. He's been there all the time. 30 years He's been in my life. 30 years this September. I'd never seen Him before except I sensed His presence, sensed the anointing, sensed things about Him but never saw Him. Have you seen the Holy Spirit? My prayer today is for you. You're Jack. You see, when Jack got home, he had to realize that the Father and the Son were coming, but the Holy Spirit was already there. And he'd been there a long time. He is the promise of the Father. And he is the direct representative of both the Father and the Son because the three are one. And guess what? We are made in their likeness. We are like them. And so it fits well. It should not be strange for you to have this kind of experience with God because you are made like Him. You are like Him. You're not like the devil. That's a twist on a creation. You're not like the devil at all. That's not who you are. That's not who you... Even when you acted like the devil and spoke like the devil, you never were the devil. You always were God's kids. You just came home. That's all. Now I don't know what to do. I've told you my story. It profoundly touched me and I, I didn't know whether I was awake or asleep when I was musing with God about John chapter 14 verse 23. But I can tell you this. When I saw the Holy Spirit, I was wide awake. I kind of cried when I heaved from here because I loved him so much. And now I met him. Holy Spirit. My prayer today is, is that you might see him too in your spirit. Would you close your eyes for a moment, please? Would you close your eyes? You're Jack. And you're going home to your place. And hot on your heels is the Father and the Son coming to your house. When you walk in the door, you realize the Holy Spirit is already here. Holy Spirit, you've been here all this time. And yet I didn't know you. I never saw you, Holy Spirit. May we all see you today, Lord. May you reveal yourself as a person. May the eyes of the understanding in this room be opened right now. May we see you, Lord, and may we come to understand you are a person like Jesus is and like the Father is. May we see your countenance. May we see you in our spirit today, Lord, that we might understand you in a completely different way. Lord God, today, may there be a revelation of you, Lord, and... And as we worship you in a moment, it's time when I call the music team back, Lord God, may we enter in seeing you, encountering you, Holy Spirit, in a whole new way. Because, Lord, I know that we cannot minister in the future with an expectation that you are some kind of dispensation, you are some kind of chemist, you are some kind of gift. May, may we understand that it's you we want. And all the things, all the gifts, all the, everything that we have comes from you. And so we don't worship the gifts. We don't just love the gifts. We love you, the giver of the gifts, Holy Spirit. Lord, today as we, as we leave this place, where many of us, if, if it's not this morning, may it be today, may it be soon, Lord God, that we encounter you in prayer, God the Holy Spirit. May we be able to relate to you and have time with you 
like we can. May we be like Jack. Could we even roll on the floor with you, Holy Spirit? He said, okay to do, God. Is it okay to, to grab a hold of the Holy Spirit like we grab a hold of Jesus? Can we, can we embrace the Holy Spirit as like a person and just hug on to you? Holy Spirit, would you? You're so holy. Can we do that, Lord? Can we? Can we have time with you, Lord, like that? Could we just enter in to the divine romance? The dance that you have. Can we enter right into the middle of that dance with you, Lord? Of course we can. We're invited. In fact, we're more than invited. We are called. In fact, we are more than called. We should remain. That's our home. That's our future. It's eternal. It's forever. Oh Lord, today, as we worship you, may we realize that we have now been brought into the divine relationship. The joyful intimacy, the relational personhood, that God enjoys. May we enter into you like you enter into each other, Lord, and yet we do not lose our own identity. We blend into you, yet we remain a person. Lord, is this what you're teaching us to understand? Is this what you're taking us into now, that we, we should do this out of this knowledge, out of this foundation of love, this change forever that just crumbles our hearts Lord God and the stony hearts that we have and the, the thing that ruled us the emotions that ruled us cannot rule anymore because the dominant force is the love of God can I have the music team to come back please So he, here you are, walking on the beach, and Jesus asks you this question, do you love me? Do you love me? And you will say to the Lord, Lord of course, you know that I love you. But in brackets, Jesus will say, I know, I know you love me, but I wanted you to know that you love me. I wanted you to know that you love me, because you're wondering whether you do. You do, but you wonder whether you do. You wonder if that's enough. Have I answered the requirements to love God? And I think Jesus is saying, I commanded you to love me and you are loving me but you don't know you're loving me you don't know if that's enough you think you think you should love me more but I want to tell you this this morning you cannot love me more than you do you love me would you stand to your feet please Father Father God you are a revealer of the Holy Spirit. And today, we want to say to you, we know, Lord, that we love you. We know we love you. But today, Lord, we're asking, would you let us know how much you love us? Would you let our insecurities die away and our rejection fall apart in the sheer power of truth today and show us the Holy Spirit as that young man and as we worship today Lord I, I want you to show each one here what you showed me last night so that when I talk to you Holy Spirit I can see you not as a dove, but I love the dove. Not as oil, and I love the oil, Lord. 
not as the river of life. We love the river of life. Not as fire. We love the fire. But as you. You, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You. You yourself. Today, the devil is bound and every foreign voice silenced in this place. Because you are before your people, Lord God, and I stand aside to allow you to reveal yourself in worship. In Jesus' name, amen.